There's that hardworking Steve. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon, Council. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Go ahead, Rob. With the... On behalf of the town of Essex, we acknowledge that this land is the traditional territory of the three Federacy of First Nations, which is comprised of the Ojibwe, the Adawa, and the Potawatomi peoples, and of the Huron Wyandotte peoples. We value the significant historical and contemporary contributions of local and regional First Nations and of all of the original peoples of Turtle Island who have been living and working on the land from time immemorial. Uh, at this point, we'll, we'll stand for the national anthem, please. like to welcome the viewing audience and uh, we'll go right to uh, Rob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This to advise that back on Monday, uh, council did meet in closed session uh, to discuss a proposed or pending acquisition of land by the municipality. Uh, they did this in closed session as permitted to do so uh, by section 239 of the municipal act. At that meeting, council did give direction to administration with respect to that proposed acquisition of land. And that's the extent of my closed meeting report at this time. For the report, uh, I'm gonna ask if there is any conflict of interest amongst council members here tonight. Uh, go ahead, uh, Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, when the report of the Re Integrity Commissioner comes forward, I will be declaring conflict on the vote, but I do get a chance to defend myself. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, we'll go uh, right to the adoption of the uh, published agenda, please, for July 19th. I need a mover on this, please. Uh, Councillor Bjorkman and Deputy Mayor Malash, all in favor? That's carried. And the, uh, I need a motion for the adoption of the July 5th meeting, please. Could I have a mover for that one? 
Uh, Councillor Bowman and Councillor Vandendol, all in favor? That one's carried. And I need a mover for the special uh, council meeting for May 10th. I need a mover for that one, please. Uh, Deputy Mayor Malash and a seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Bowman, all in favor? That one's carried. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item 8, 8.1 on this evening's agenda is from the Office of the Integrity Commissioner for the Town of Essex. Mr. Swayze is here as a presentation this evening to report to Council in open session concerning a code of conduct complaint. Thank you, Rob. Thank if, you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Mr. Swayze, if you're ready, you can go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can everyone hear me? Claire, yes. Um, Good evening, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I have uh, today received many emails that uh, supporting uh, uh, Councillor Bondi and telling me how hard she works. And uh, I understand these were invited by, uh, by her, but uh, that's okay. Um, I don't dispute that she works hard. And, uh, uh, but my submission tonight is that her hard work is very misguided. What I am trying to teach Councillor Bondi is that you need to hire professionals to run electrical distribution companies and manage municipalities. Um, they are hired based on their experience, their education, and their reputation. No member of council, including Councillor Bondi, has this competence or experience. If you treat the professionals publicly like uh, Councillor Bondi wants to, you will lose them. Shooting a video in front of Elk um, was inappropriate. The, the noose, uh, uh, mem, everybody calls it, uh, was inappropriate. Um, and then the, the comment about staff was disgraceful, quite frankly, and it shouldn't have been made. Now, I should say, um, Mr. Mayor, that I've interviewed many staff and, um, and any suggestion that, uh, that uh, they're not complaining is uh, absurd. Um, I had a, a complaint from you, Mr. Mayor. It was appropriately documented. And I encouraged all these staff members that I spoke to not to complain. Um, so, um, I, I, Council, Councillor Bonnie needs to understand that you don't criticize these professionals or you'll lose them. A second concept I want to teach Councillor Bonnie is that she only has one vote, she can accomplish nothing without the support of a majority of council. And she's lost that, that uh, as I perceive it, she's lost that support. She has ambitions of running for mayor um, and the mayor only has one vote. And believe me, a maverick mayor in my experience uh, will be a four year disaster, but it's up to her to run for council and run for mayor. And, uh, um, and that's not a problem. I said in my report that her beating up on staff must stop. She could say almost anything she wants about the mayor or any other member of council, but stay away from staff. Those are my submissions, Mr. Mayor. And of course, I will answer uh, any questions from council um, if you wish. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bob, for the report. And I, I, at this point, I'll go right to Councillor Bondi. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Bondi. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. It's, it's kind of shocking to hear you're on a first name basis with our integrity commissioner, Mr. Swayze, but I'm wondering since you submitted the complaint and in the complaint it said, thanks Bob for hearing me out. The information I'm sharing can be confirmed by our deputy mayor, Richard Malosh. I'm wondering if another say Councillor Bowman, our county council alternate can chair the meeting since you're the one that put in the complaint and you made it a collaboration with the deputy mayor. Uh, 
Deputy, at, at this point here, uh, I, I think Deputy Mayor, if I can hand over the gavel to you at, at this point, then I'll, I'll take it back. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yes, so um, if you uh, want to go ahead and speak, Mr. S uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor, did you want the floor? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll speak. Uh, I'll speak very briefly on it. Um, and, and I don't want to carry it on. I'll, sp I'll speak very briefly. Uh, I read in the Windsor Star where this was uh, political. Okay, just the other day, uh, my comment that uh, Councillor Bondi made, I, I can assure her and I'll assure all the council, this definitely was not political in any means. I'm, I'm, I want to protect, I want to protect our staff. I'm not saying Councillor Bondi doesn't work hard and, and I'm not saying that. Uh, I believe she does work hard. And I but, want to pardon me. Sorry, my mic. Okay, I'm not saying that Councillor, you don't work hard. Okay, I know you work hard, but we have to have respect for our staff. And that's all I'm saying. And when you made the statement in the Windsor Star that this was political, believe me, this was not political at all. And you made a statement that I was, uh, you were running against me as mayor. I'm definitely not running for mayor uh, next term. I'm retiring. I want to spend time with my grandchildren. And you're aware of that. You're aware that I wasn't running. Everybody on council knew that. This was my last term. 12 years of municipal politics. Uh, I, I think we moved the town very, very forward, big time in the last couple of years. I think as a whole council, we did a terrific job. So once again, this was definitely not political by any means. This was just mere respect for our, our staff. That's all it was. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Bondi, did you want to continue? And I'll pass the gavel back to uh, the mayor. Yes, thank you. I actually believe somebody else should be sharing it since it's a complaint against myself and, or the mayor. But, but anyways, um, I am happy to hear, Mr. Mayor, that you want to spend time with your grandchildren. Uh, that is something that I, I did not know, right? You do not talk to me. Even uh, I said hi to you July 2nd at the John R. Park ribbon cutting and you wouldn't even acknowledge me. So anyways, enough about that. I will talk about uh, and get right to my defense. It is true. I am critical of ELF and its service delivery model and its board of directors. In my opinion, I am no way contravening the code of conduct. I was critical of operations before, during, and after being a board member. Both the town of Kingsville and the town of Lakeshore have hosted ELF as a delegate at their council meetings, and both councils were critical of ELK as well. I have posted summaries of those recent meetings on my website, sherrybondi.com. I am also critical of Hydro One and recently got support, five votes, or actually I think it was anonymous, from fellow councillors to send a letter to Hydro One stating the concerns. That letter is on my website as well. In reference to the time frame when the meme was posted, I did learn that a power outage happened in a it was in Hydro One territory, had nothing to do with ELF. It was caused by farm equipment and a guy wire. The post is on my Facebook March 27th. I've also been critical of Hydro One over the years. Where it is true, I have recorded a statement or a video outside of ELK office. It's not a secret location. All I was doing was sharing the frustration of my residents with ongoing power outages. The town is the sole shareholder of ELK and we do not know what the asset is worth. That is another thing that I received majority of votes on Essex Council to get us to ask Elk Energy for an asset assessment. That was talked about at the May 3rd meeting around the nine minute, nine minute mark. So Mr. Swayze, you can check that out if you want to do further research. It is also true, I posted my, a social media picture that was sent to me from a friend in the area saying that this is you, the person said to me, this is you. I posted it on my social media. I found the storyline from the sender in the picture of me being silenced by the old way of thinking very provocative. The irony of this picture being used as a way to silence me for poor service from Elk is uncanny. I asked the integrity commissioner if he wanted a signed affidavit 
stating that I received this meme from somebody. He did not ask for such signed affidavit. In response to the code of conduct, let's look at 9.03, discreditable conduct. All members have a duty to treat members of the public, one another, committee, board members, staff appropriately without abuse, bullying, intimidation, and to ensure that the work environment is free from discrimination and harassment. A member shall not use abusive, insulting words or expressions towards any other member, any employee, any member of the public, and shall not speak in a manner that is discriminatory to an individual, which clearly hasn't happened unless you deem me being critical of bad service by a corporation that does business with the town of Essex. Discredible conduct. If Staples sells the town of Essex pens without ink, and I ask them why there is no ink in their pens, is that discreditable conduct too? If you, did de if you deem this unacceptable conduct, I look forward to your recommendation as to how me and my other fellow members of Essex Council are to respond when we get a pickup truck without a steering wheel. And our residents ask us, why do we own such a thing? At the April 19th council meeting, I entered a notice of motion about safe and reliable supply of electricity from Hydro One. It was supported by Councillor Guerin and passed. That Essex Council send a letter to Hydro One to let them know of the concerns in our municipality of frequent power outages that are negatively impacting both our residential homes and businesses. The mayor also publicly harassed me at that meeting. Mr. Swayze, you can look at that at the 152 minute mark at that meeting. I believe the mayor's continued harassment of me is creating a toxic workplace. It's a huge distraction for fellow councillors and staff who just want to go to council and get work done. It seems that those who are asking questions get bullied. Mayor Snively sent you a laundry list of items, the best I can tell he sent, and in hopes that something sticks with you. As we can all see by this complaint, one stuck by tying two things together that don't belong. Elk did ask me to step down from the board due to my line of questioning and sent me a letter in 2019 stating, if you wish to be a public critic of Elk, you must first resign as your position from the board. That is what I did. It left me the only option. During my time on the Elk board, I asked about a code of conduct for the Elk board members because there wasn't one. I asked because of the treatment of the mayor during those meetings that are closed meetings where he yelled at me and pointed his finger. I always remember the town of Essex is the sole shareholder of the company. That is the reason I am so critical. I have a fiduciary responsibility as a counselor. And when I was on the board, I wanted to move the company in a direction of 200 year viability. That is the company's fiduciary duty to its shareholders. Again, let's not forget the residents of the town of Essex are purchasers of shares through their taxes. If we don't invest in infrastructure and return on investment, the, the investment to the shareholders will diminish. That being said, I can see over the last couple of years, more investment in elk infrastructure and more hiring and a lot of positive improvements. If it costs me $1,500 and a little bit of uh, hard work, I'll, I'll take it. This thinking out of the box has put me at odds with everybody who likes to see elk remain the same. As you can appreciate, those with the light bulb shine bright are never in harmony with those that wish to be lit by a candle. A very interesting chain of events. I can agree there is some merit with elk not appreciating my list of items. They may believe I'm soliciting a list, but when a resident reaches out to me, I prefer to respond rather than do nothing. In the complaint, Mr. Snively also said, I sit on county council and every mayor and deputy mayor say to me, you have a huge problem. Can I get a list of the author of those statements? Assuming a huge problem is me and not his leadership. I ask you, Mr. Swayze again, why is Mr. Snively a school hall bully whispering this item here? I expect you to have a comment to this in your behavior about your report as well. Mr. Snively's reason for contacting you is based on lies, innuendos, in his imagination, in his fact complaint based, lacked necessary information. Mr. Mayor's complaint to the integrity commissioner just said various. He didn't outline the particular parts of the code of conduct that you're supposed to do with a formal complaint. He also put in there items that were past the 60 day mark. 
You can't throw everything in there from the past two or three years. During this term of council, I have come to the integrity commissioner twice about the mayor's treatment of me, and both times that was dismissed. This is relational harassment, and this type of harassment in which harm is being caused by damaging someone's relationship or social status must stop. Anyone watching council meetings can see how he treats me. Why does he treat me like this? Because the residents came to me on election day 2018, and I took their concerns seriously. I was the whistleblower, and since then the OPP have charged him. If this council should deem that taking away my pay for wanting Elk and Hydro One to provide reliable services to the residents of Essex, I could be working with pay for the rest of my career here at the town of Essex. I will add that working without pay is perfectly fine with me if it has to mean that we get to the end result. To address the second part of complaint that has the town of Essex staff, I sent you my response and I believe the file was closed. Weeks later, you added two more items not related to ELK and you gave me four days to answer. I'm sure you got a big thanks, Bob, for doing this since Mr. Snively's earlier emails said a lot of Bob, Bob, I'm asking you to help me for this one. And in a later sentence, please, Bob, I'm asking you to take some sort of action. I will respond to further formal complaints if they are done in a fair manner and follow the code of conduct. There is no mention of you in your report as to why I had to rush to response. I do believe my answer I sent to you June 7th deadline was discussed and Mr. Snively made it and it was decided that after the discussion, you added different questions. So again, I will respond in a fair manner. In, res in her response to the complaint, in my response to my complaint to you, Mr. Uh, Swayze, you said it was absurd, my explanation about the mean. My response is 100% fact factual. You failed to investigate. You failed to check out my social media. I would like you to take some time and look at everything I post all the time. I post memes all the time. This is frankly a hunt by Mayor Snively. I repeat, if you would like to hear from the sender, just ask, we can send you an affidavit. You preferred to hear Mr. Snively and his cohorts. I asked you to contact the original artist of the meme to see the intent of the drawing, but I don't believe you did that either. It appears that Mr. Snively's pleading of you, Bob, I'm asking for help, has paid off in spades. I'm now looking for the, forward to the next series of complaints by him that you will again be bringing to this council. Maybe I'll put up another billboard for him to complain to you about. There is also no mention in the report that I should remove my artwork from Facebook or issue an apology and be given two months. These are inconsistencies and they are uncanny and they really show the different set of rules and the different treatment here in the town of Essex. You make no recommendation or suggestion on how to better myself, training. You're just wanting to take away money. Let's make a recommendation. You know, Councillor Vanderdolen got a recommendation for diversity training. I wasn't even asked to take down my meme. It would make sense for this council, including our mayor, to review the code of conduct and having tr priest training as a group. Let's read the code of conduct interest, in, interest section of the code. Public confidence in the town of Essex is at risk when the conduct of a member involves or appears to invoice a conflict of loyalties, usually stated as a conflict between public duty and private interests. So council, um, I am sorry that you are in this position. I would rather much be in my position than your position. Uh, you can take my money, but you won't take my voice because my voice is the voice of the people. And at the end of the day, my one question out of, out of this is, Mr. Mayor, what is your motivation? And I think we can all answer that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I'll open it up to uh, Council now. Is there any uh, Councillor? Mr. Mayor, may I, oh, may go I ahead. respond? I, yeah, go I ahead. Just have a go, short, go ahead. I have a short response. Thank you. Um, I'm going to read this. There is no team here at the town, and I am the only one not afraid to say so. We need inclusive leaders, not leaders who protect their turf and try to pick and choose who they want to be next in line. It happened last term, and it's happening again, and expect to see more and more of it. This is not the leadership the people deserve. 
There are so many other ways to run a municipality, run it like the councillors and the community matter. Um, the the councillor may have had four days to respond, but what response could she possibly make? Obviously, she could have said, I did not write those letter, those words. Obviously, she had a chance within four days to do that. There is no other response. And I stand by my submissions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Open it up to council now. Uh, anybody from council want to comment on this at all? Uh, Deputy Mayor Malash, go ahead. Thank you, uh, through you, Mayor. Um, I think I think there's some confusion here as far as what uh, Councillor Bondi understands is is being the the charge. It's not for being progressive on anything or having an opinion. Uh, all of us have opinions that um, are not necessarily the opinions of others in the community or others that are on council. That's perfectly fine. And if you want to be, um, if you feel that something is wrong in the community, that's that's what we should be doing is we should be talking about it or bringing our points of view forward, particularly if we have residents that are, that believe that something is wrong and, and we're presenting what they believe is wrong. But where we have to draw the line is when we involve staff of any of these corporations, including the town of Essex or any uh, corporation that we are owners of. And one of the reasons why this is necessary is because we are their bosses and it's very difficult for staff to lash back or retaliate because of something that appears on social media by a counselor or a board of directors member that bashes one of them because their livelihood depends on whether or not the council wants to keep them as an employee or whether the board of directors wants to keep them as an employee. And it doesn't matter if it's a majority of council members that uh, they're lashing out at. Uh, they just don't have that opportunity. They're the employee. So we have to be careful as council members and as board of directors that we're not taking uh, a stance against our staff in the public eye. And Councillor Bondi has done this a couple of times. She's, she knows that she has. And with, with uh, ELK, she's done it. And she's also done it with Town of Essex staff. Um, but this is just an evaluation of saying you cannot do that. And, and it seems like even with warnings that have happened in the past, it still continues to happen. So the complaint was taken to the integrity commissioner and rightfully so it has to, it has to go to the integrity commissioner. It has to go to somebody who's has an unbiased opinion uh, other than someone on council. And I know that she's trying to paint a picture that says that because the mayor's calling him Bob by first name, everybody knows uh, Larry's personality. I call him Larry, but we're not best friends or anything like that. Uh, we have a relationship on council because we work together. Um, but because he calls him Bob, I, I prefer to call him Mr. Swayze. It's just, uh, for me, it's, you know, but perhaps, I, and I don't even know Mr. Swayze, if I've called you, ever called you Robert or Bob, I usually go by Robert, I think, but I, I say Robert to you when you and I are just talking on uh, between ourselves rather than calling him Mr. Swayze in, 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 you know, if we're here in, in, on a council meeting, I call him Mr. Swayze out of, out of respect. But uh, just because he calls him Bob doesn't mean that they're, of course, they're on a first name <laughs> basis talking to each other. Um, but I, uh, Mr. Swayze is who we've hired. We've decided as a council, and he's been our representative for a number of terms of council. We've had the choice to have someone else do this job if we thought that we wanted somebody else that we didn't think he was doing a good job. And we've lived through a number of these complaints over the years. He doesn't charge on every complaint that's been brought forward to him. Uh, Councillor Bondi, I think that you probably had other complaints from this council or maybe, I, don't even, I don't even know for sure, but or maybe even other council uh, terms of council. 
but I think this is the first time that Mr. Swayze has ever brought something forward on your, like for, on your account. So I, I, he's not a biased person. He, that's his specialty. And he's, he's the integrity commissioner for a number of communities across Southern Ontario. And I think that we have to listen to what he has to say. And I know that there's people out there in the uh, general public that a lot of times they don't know all the facts. You can read a report and still not know all the facts. There are facts out there and there are other um, insinuations that have happened in the past that maybe go along with uh, this report. There's a, there's a relationship that has existed between Councillor Bondi and the staff at ELK. And I think because of that relationship that's existed uh, in the past, that staff, and because I'm on the board of directors at ELK and there's four other members, four other councillors here that are on that board of directors, we have a better understanding of staff's um, reaction to what uh, occurred. And as Mr. Swayze has said, there are a number of staff members who would have put forward um, some kind of complaint against Councillor Bondi, but he recommended just hold off because I already have a complaint. And I think it probably has more impact coming from the mayor rather than different individual staff members. Um, so, and, and again, by a staff member actually making the complaint, it puts them in a very awkward position, as I explained, because of the fact that they're hired on. They're not elected, they're hired on people and we're their bosses. So I don't know, I, I, I just think that I, I, I wish we weren't here in this position that we're in right now, in all honesty. And every time we have to bring our integrity commissioner forward, I wish we were not in that kind of a position to have to make a decision. But I think in this instance that we have to move forward on this and, and live with it. And as Councillor Bondi said, you know, she, um, she insists that she's the, I mean, I, I'm not sure. And I'm sure that Councillor Bondi would uh, prefer not to bash um, administration. But I know it's happened and I've seen it in social media. And this is the first time where it's actually been brought up to the integrity commissioner. So uh, I, I guess that's my piece for now. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Malash, uh, who was next? Is there anybody else from council like to speak? Uh, Councillor Bjorkman, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, yeah, it's uh, another moment here for our council. Uh, I have to look at this report and say to Mr. Swayze, um, I'm very disappointed um, in this. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking at things we've heard, things people have spoken of. Uh, the meme that's brought out here, Councillor Bondi identified herself on day one of this term as the official opposition. It is not a stretch to think that she believes she's the light bulb in the middle of those candles. That's, that is something that uh, she's worked at and has, has built her brand around being the only one that asks the tough questions, being the one. So to think that that is something that suddenly became uh, something against elk, I think is ridiculous. I don't know how you, you can even come to that conclusion. Um, as far as the video in front of Elk, I've watched that video multiple times looking for something, looking for what is the thing that Councillor Bonney just did or just said that refuted somebody's expertise, that, that showed somebody in a bad light, that I don't see any of it. Um, I don't always agree with Councillor Bondi's politics. I don't always agree with the way Councillor Bondi says things. And yes, I believe she has, has said things. And, and I'm looking at the, uh, the letter um, that was the second part of the complaint. But in my mind, that's a different complaint. Like the first complaint should have been dealt with, taken care of, that was two months ago. And now we're gonna, a few days before uh, 
we, we bring this forward, we're going to add in, oh, let's add, oh, here's something else that we just, we could put this in there. That Maybe that'll, in her words earlier, stick. I, I don't like the way this is presented. I don't think it's professional. I don't see a moment here where you say, here's where we breached the code of conduct. I don't have something there um, that says that to me. And, and uh, frankly, um, as I said, I'm disappointed. And I hope whatever uh, amount of time you spent putting into this after originally receiving it and not turning it down, you don't charge the town for. It. That's how I feel about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councillor. I think uh, we had two more. We had Councillor Bowman, then Councillor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just a couple comments. Uh, issues like this are always very difficult when it comes before a council. And uh, in, the, in the past, uh, I think uh, they probably weren't handled very well. And uh, that's why the integrity commissioner's position has been put in place. So it's somebody from outside the council that looks at it and does the background research and, and is not involved with the day-to-day -day operations of the municipality or its council. So it, it's a sort of an outside look. Um, I know, uh, council, and I'll use Sherry because I tend to use first names as well. Um, uh, works very hard out there and it, and it is um, a, a extremely um, a visual person in the community. Uh, I respect the her position, and then I also expect uh, a, uh, receive the uh, um, position of the integrity commissioner, and I think it's important uh, that we look at that, and that's why we hire him is to make that uh, distinction and and judgment as an outside body, and I think it's. Uh, really our position to support his findings and um, uh, and I will do that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bannon Nolan, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, through you. Um, yeah, I, I really don't, I don't get this. And I don't think most of our residents will either. Um, it seems some people have a, <clears throat> a complete lack of proportion. It's a very glaring lack of proportion. Two months ago, I was docked 60 days pay for uttering two words of truth about our pandemic. <clears throat> two months. Today, it looks like council will probably give half that punishment to someone who threatened people with a noose. This person waged a two and a half year long campaign of lies, insults, slander, and harassment against the unionized staff and management of our excellent utility, BLK Energy. A campaign that included a noose and gallows, a racialized death threat that her supporters don't seem to mind. In the real world, threatening anyone with a noose, it can't be a joke, it can't be, it doesn't matter. If you use it, it results in a criminal police investigation and usually charges. And yet here we are, two months punishment for saying, calling something what it really is, and 30 days for using violence of a noose to threaten people's livelihoods. I, it, it makes no sense. Uh, I think the punishment should be many times what it is, but I'll vote for it, of course. And another thing, if the... Uh, the integrity commissioner is saying this must stop. Why is there yet another notice of motion from the same counselor, which has been continuing the same campaign of beating down the people of ELK? I, how can we allow that as a council? I don't get it. Anybody else from uh, council? Uh, Councillor Guerin, go ahead. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, this this to me, I mean, it's been brewing for a while. There's obviously. Um, if anyone doesn't see this for what it is, to me, there seems to be a personality clash between our mayor and Councillor Bondi. It's been going on, uh, right or wrong. I've I've asked many times in emails to both of them when when this stuff surfaces, not to involve me with uh, with anything that doesn't have to do with moving our town business forward. I'm not interested in games. No one on this council should be interested in, in any of this type of stuff. But here we are having to deal with it, so we're going to have to deal with it. I have a great relationship with the mayor and with Councillor Bondi. I, I, I often call both to uh, discuss uh, items that come before me from my uh, constituents. And that's what you're supposed to do as a team. Um, Councillor Bondi sometimes takes to social media and sometimes carries with her this uh, 
white knight syndrome where she thinks she can solve everyone's problems. There's nothing wrong with that, but you can't solve everyone's problems and neither can I. Um, if we're looking at the, the report, like where I like to do my business is right here in chamber, whether it's in closed session, open session, um, has a board of director of ELK, I take care of that business at the board table. That's where we discuss things. Outside the board, we don't discuss stuff. That's just common sense. That's codes of ethics. That's what we we're, we're abide by. Um, with respect to the, the, commit, the, the report by the integrity commissioner, there's parts of it that, that I, I find a little bit far stretched. Um, the, the meme could be, depending on what narrative you're trying to match it to and how you're looking at it, it could mean several things. I might even go as far as to say, back a couple months ago when Councilor Vanderdolen was, was, uh, was put before the integrity commissioner report, it, the same thing. Maybe his statements could have been taken one way or the other too. That it is what it is. The meme could be taken either way. The video in front of the Yale ELK building, I don't look at it as bashing the utility as much as I, I, I look at it as um, a former board of director with the ELK for years, um, removing herself from the board and still trying to look for answers herself and for her constituents. We all have to remember the ELK, the town owns ELK, but the taxpayers uh, of Essex um, are one customer of ELK, but Kings of Lakeshores are not our taxpayers. So it, it's a, it's a, you got to look at this, what this utility is and, and take it for what it is. We have to ask these questions. She's been trying to get answers. I've been trying to get answers of back, back a couple of years ago, even on the value of ELK, looking, taking my board hat off and looking at it from my council with my council hat on the value really, we talked about this before it is a healthy utility on paper. The value of it is whatever we feel it's worth if we want to sell it and whatever somebody's willing to pay for it if they want to buy it. But there's another part of that um, calculation that you got to consider is, is how much money that, 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 that utility is going to bring our residents or, and, our, and the, uh, the customers moving forward. There's dividends that will, will be there in the future. To ask what, you know, um, to get into operational stuff and does this truck have that and why is that, that um, being done on um, when we should be doing that? That's really not the role of the board of directors. It's really not the role of council. That's why we hire a, a CEO to do that type of stuff. And the same thing with the town business. That's why we have a CAO and we have staff in place. Yes, we can, we can question it, but we have to question it in the right form. And we can't put a portrayal out there or, or portray something out there on social media or in, in family gatherings or wherever we are in group friend gatherings. Um, if we don't know the facts behind it, we really shouldn't be talking to it. It's one thing to try to roll over a stone if you think there's something under it, but you better make sure there's something under it. And there not always is. Um, like, so, so yeah, we're in an uncomfortable position, but that's, that is what it is. And we're going to make a decision night one way or the other. I accept the report for what it is. But I, I don't really see any reason why um, there is a, um, uh, a penalty of her remuneration tied to it. I, I would hope that Councillor Bonnie could just accept it for, um, look a little bit more into it and accept it for what it is. And maybe it's, you know, it's the first thing that's come forward um, on something like this officially. So maybe it's just something we can use moving forward as a warning for her. Um, but I do support, we have an integrity commissioner for a reason. It's an unbiased opinion. I read the report. Like I say, I have some issues with it here and there, but overall, I, I accept the report. That's all I need to say on it right now. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Councillor Garen. So at this point, I think everybody spoke on the issue. Um, uh, I want to thank, uh, I'll call you Robert <laughs> this time. Uh, thank you for the report, Robert. So I'm going to, I think, um, go to the deputy mayor, the deputy mayor, uh, you, you made a statement that you accept the uh, presentation. Are you, are, you, are you going to make the motion to, uh, to accept the uh, report and recommendation? Ms. Mr. Mayor, just a point of information. Go before ahead. I, I will be declaring conflict, but just for clarification, because our integrity commissioner is here, Board of Elk members who get paid to be on Elk Energy are not in conflict by voting for this, right? Since he's here, we might as well ask him because I'm getting asked that question. And when you vote, I will declare conflict. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Robert, could you answer that? Would we be in conflict or no? Uh, 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 Mr. Mayor, I, I don't uh, think you have any conflict. You, uh, um, you're, uh, 
receiving a report from the integrity commissioner. The only conflict in the room is uh, is uh, Councillor Bondi, uh, but she does have the opportunity to influence the vote and and uh, um, to speak to it, but not vote. Okay, thank you, thank you, Robert. Uh, go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I'll have a, I have a comment on the conflict of interest as well. Uh, so the conflict of interest would be as if any of the board of directors were to, uh, if their uh, income from being on the board was affected uh, in any way from the vote that we were to uh, make this evening. So I would say we're no, we're not in a conflict of interest. It would have to be uh, affects us financially or affects our family financially or parents financially. That's what creates a conflict of interest. So in this particular case, it's not, it's not creating a conflict of interest. Conflict of interest. There's a specific exemption in the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act in section four, which exempts your uh, income uh, on behalf of the corporation. Good. Thank you, Robert. If, if I can just say, say one thing before we go to a vote. Um, I, moving forward, moving forward, I would just, I, would, I, I think pretty well we've done a lot of good things in this municipality. We have a good council uh, and we can look around and look at all the projects we've done. And uh, at this point here, um, it, this is a lesson learned, I think. Um, moving forward, uh, you know, we've got to be careful with uh, social media and we've got to be careful what we print. Okay, and what we what we put what we post, and that's all I'm asking council. Moving forward, let's be very very careful what we post because it does hurt other people, and it does. So at this point here, uh, Deputy Mayor, if you uh, want to make a motion to move forward with the report, okay, yes, I have. Okay, and I need a, a seconder for that report, please. Accept the report, uh, Councillor Bowman. All in favor of the report. Oh. Pardon me. Hold on one sec. Go ahead. Confirm that's uh, received and supported the recommendations. Yes. Yes. So all in favor of that report, please. Recommendations. We got myself. Okay, included. So we got one, two, three, four. So it passes. Right. Yeah, four to three. It passes. Four two. Pardon me. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor, go ahead. I just have to say that uh, there's something wrong with my iPad, it's draining, the power is draining very quickly. I may, you may lose me very shortly here. And if so, then I have no other way of getting onto the meeting. So just letting you know, I'm gonna shut my video off uh, in order to try and conserve because every time I turn the video on, it seems to drain faster, okay? Okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor. And once again, Robert, uh, I'll call you Robert. I won't call you Bob again, but Robert, uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, tonight to the council meeting and, and uh, presenting re your report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and to all members of council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, moving reports from administration. 10.1 is planning 2021-13. Request for extension of draft plan approval for the Delabana de uh, development for receipt and that council approve an extension of draft approval for the lands comprising of part of lots five, six, and seven on registered plan 202 for an additional three years. And that a copy of the resolution, if approved, be forwarded to the manager of planning services for the council. You've seen the report, uh, Councillor Bondi, you want to move it? Okay, Councillor Bondi moves it. A seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Bjorkman, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Ten point two, economic development, twenty twenty one oh nine, community improvement plan for quarter two of twenty twenty one. Uh, for receipt, but through you, Mr. Mayor, our Director of Development Services, Lori Chadwick, uh, is looking to speak uh, to this matter. Laurie, if you're there, uh, go ahead. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. No, actually, I don't need to speak to it. Uh, this was just a, a report uh, based uh, on the quarter, and uh, we're halfway through our year, just for receipt only. Okay, thank you, Laurie. So I'll need a mover to uh, 
receive the report, please. Uh, Councillor Vandendolen and Councillor Bowman. All in favor, the report carried. Thank you. 10.3 is economic development 2021-10, rebuilding report and development overview for the month of June, 2021. Uh, for receipt for information purposes this evening. Have a mover on this one, please. Uh, Councillor Vanendal and Councillor Bjorkman. All in favor? Deputy Mayor Malash, you're in favor? Yes, I'm in favor. Okay, thank you. 10.4, Community Services 2021-08. Re significant event status. That said report be received. That council approves the ninth annual McGregor Mug Run and International Beer Fest for significant event status for the purpose of applying for their special occasion permit uh, for the event scheduled to be held Saturday, September 25th. And that council approved the proposed route and road closures as requested. And that finally the proponent be notified uh, that they must count, contact the County of Essex for any county roads uh, expected to be used for the run. <clears throat> Have a mover, mover please, uh, Councillor Guerin and Councillor Bowman. All in favor? That one's carried. Deputy Mayor, you're in favor? Favor, yes. I can say one thing before we move forward. That is a great event. Uh, it's a lot of fun going there. So go ahead, uh, Rob. Ten point five this evening is finance and business services twenty twenty one oh eight re financial analyst contract position for receipt and that council approve an eight month financial analyst contract position uh, running from September first twenty one to April thirtieth twenty two. Have a mover on this one, please. Uh, Councillor Bowman and Councillor Bjorkman, all in favor? <coughs> oh, I'm any questions? Any questions before? No questions. All in favor? Carried. 10.6, Finance and Business Services 2021-09, re-2022 budget initiation memo. Uh, this is for council's information this evening, uh, but we also have Kate Gersovich, our acting director of corporate services, looking to speak to you this evening. Okay, go ahead. If you're, uh, if you're ready, go ahead. I through the chair. Um, so this is the same memo that we've been bringing forward for a few years now. I just wanted to highlight a couple items for council's information. Uh, 2022 will be an election year. So just note that the council discretionary fund will be on a freeze for the 22 year. Um, also election expenses will be present, but those could vary greatly depending on the delivery method chosen for the election year this year. Um, of importance to council would be on page two, uh, there is a timetable noted. And so um, the submission window for council's capital requests would be August 3rd to the 31st. So please feel free to forward those requests to myself. Um, and we will be distributing the council wish list for your information. Um, another new addition this year, you'll note is July 29th. We've introduced some internal budget training this was a direct recommendation from the service delivery review. So uh, we are going to be doing that internally. However, um, at the onset of council, we did provide some budget training, um, but what I would really encourage all the council to do is uh, contact myself and I would be happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one with you should you have any questions pertaining to um, the budget or how our process works. Um, but on that note, uh, I know that the director position may be vacant right now, but I really just wanted to, um, you know, to let you guys know that uh, my assistant, Heather McDonald and myself, we've really been working behind the scenes for the past few years, um, championing the budgeting process. So I don't anticipate any change with this budget process, even given the vacancy. And uh, we're really looking forward to um, the budget this year and any feedback, um, that council may have uh, is really encouraged. Feel free to, like I said, set up a one-on-one -on -one call and we're looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. That'd be all.
over on that report from Kate, please. Uh, Councillor uh, Bjorkman and Councillor Bowman. All in favor of that report? I'm in favor. How about you, Deputy Mayor? <laughs> okay. Deputy Mayor's in favor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 10.7 on this evening's agenda is building and bylaw enforcement 2021-02. Uh, refill and grade report. Uh, and uh, Kevin Carter, the Town of Essex Chief Building Official, is here to speak to Council to this report. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and members of Council. Um, it's a short, brief report. Um, it's the Great Fill Report. In follow-up of Council's resolution, administration was asked to review and provide recommendations on the possible amendment to the Great Fill Bylaw. 1799 regarding the testing of soils being imported on fill sites during, during and at the end of the life cycle of a project. <clears throat> um, some background on that. Um, on January the 1st, 2021 of this year, uh, a new Ontario regulation was introduced, which is known as Regulation 406-19, called the On-Site and Accepted Soil Management Regulation. What does this mean? It now means as starting on January the 1st of this year, all contractors will now be required to provide a detailed assessment of the past uses of the excessive soil, provide a destination report of where the soil is to be dumped and implement a complex tracking and testing system to ensure that every load of fill dumped on a site is mapped to its location. These projects will require a qualified person, a geotechnical engineer, or, uh, or, or to oversee the project and submit the documentation to the Ministry of Environment. So what that means now, when our permits expire this year, all three active uh, fill permits will be expiring this year. If they were to apply and be approved for to carry on with the project, they will have to meet this Ontario Regulation 409 prior to the town issuing a permit. Um, so basically we're asking uh, council to amend the current bylaw 1799 uh, due to the fact the current uh, bylaw does not really define what a contaminant is. So we're suggesting a new definition for contaminant means any solid, liquid, gas, odor, heat, sound, vibration, radiation, or a combination of any of them resulting directly or indirectly from human activities that cause or may cause an adverse effect. Also, the amendment number two, we suggest that the town's grade fill by law also does not require testing of the soil for contaminants. So the second proposed amendment um, that the owner or the proposed permit holder submit to the chief building official written certification by a geotechnical engineer or other similar qualified person, both prior to uh, the issuance of a permit and upon completion of the work, a description of the proposed fill, including a list of sources of fill and geotechnical analysis to the content and quality of the fill. So basically by clearly defining the types of fill that are allowed to be dumped or permitted, dumped on a permitted fill site and requiring the submission of soil analysis report by a qualified person. At the commencement and completion of the project, the town would be better equipped to answer questions, concerns surrounding where the fill is coming from and what is contained in that fill. So that is the recommendations that we amend the existing bylaw, those two amendments where we can address specific contaminations. Thank you, Kevin. Um, any questions from council? I can't see uh, Deputy Mayor. Have you Mr. got Mayor, any questions? I have my hand up. Go ahead. So really uh, no questions, but I do have a comment. Uh, Kevin, thank you very much. I was uh, one of the uh, two people that, uh, I know Councillor Verbeek is not here this evening. Uh, she's away on a much-deserved vacation. Uh, so I will speak to it a little bit here. I, I 
I, I love the fact that you've put that in and the wording that you've changed. And uh, I feel much more confident now that I can go back to residents that are asking questions about soil contaminations. Um, I didn't realize previously that there was uh, um, information that we could get on the specific loads that were going into, uh, into the dump sites. So this, uh, this is a game changer for me and I'm sure it would be for Councillor Verbeek as well. Um, so I'm, I'm very pleased with what you've done here and I'm willing to move forward on this and uh, accept the changes that have been made and that's satisfactory to, uh, to help me out and uh, the questions I think that the residents would have. Thank you, Mr. Councillor Vandenola. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, uh, yeah, I, I agree with the Deputy Mayor. <laughs> Great work from Mr. Carter and, and his people. Thank you very much. I, I think this will go a long way to straightening out some of the, well, most of the confusion that people have had over what's allowed and what's not, and it's tightened up. So things would be better going forward, I'm quite sure. Thanks, thanks again. Anybody else from Council? So I will need a motion to accept the report, please. Uh, Councillor Vanendal and Councillor Bowman, uh, Deputy Mayor, you're, I know you're all in support. So all in favor, Carrie. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I'm down to 1%, so I'm shutting my video off again. All right, good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 10.8 uh, on this evening agenda is Capital Works and Infrastructure 2021-10. Results of request for tender. Uh, for the 2021 bridge and culvert program uh, for receipt and that council award the request for tender to intrepid general limited in the amount of 343,996.02 and that council approve the reallocation of project funding in the amount of 55,737.15 from capital project south malden and mole road to fund capital project rizzle nicola guardrail and finally, that council approve the additional funding in the amount of 25,874.41, uh, that amount above the approved 2021 capital budget uh, for project uh, uh, PW210028 from the asset management reserve. Any questions on this one? All in favor of the report, or I need a mover first, uh, Councillor Bondi and Councillor Bowman, all in favor? Carry. Thank you. Item 12, any updates from County Council this evening? Uh, we're, we're only having one meeting a month and meetings this Wednesday. Uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, did you have anything? Nothing, sorry. No. Okay, and we're gonna go to correspondence. Uh, now all the correspondence that we have here, uh, I'll need a mover for it and then we'll come back if anybody wants to talk on any of the items. It's on there. So at this point, I'll need a mover to accept the correspondence. Uh, Councillor Guerin and Councillor Bowman, all in favor. And I'll come back and ask uh, Council if there's any item in there you'd like to speak on. Uh, Councillor Bondi, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, I wanted to get it out there on the public record that Elk Energy did have the discussion about the evaluation request that uh, came to council. So fortunately it passed at council, but unfortunately the request did not pass at the elk board. And the reason why was um, they do not feel it's uh, a value to their customers. So I think it's good to at least close that uh, communication loop. Thank okay, thank you. Anybody else from uh, council? Mr. Mayor, yes, uh, Deputy Go Mayor. Ahead. Go ahead. So I items I'd like to uh, talk about. Uh, the first one is 13.1.8, the town of Cochrane uh, for including the PSA test for men into the medical care program. Uh, this is something that I think as for as little cost as it is, is something very worthwhile. I've always wondered why it wouldn't be included as far as the medical cost with OHIP. It's not covered. And I think that it's uh, important that uh, men do have their PSA tests on a regular basis. And I think the $33 charge, as little as it is, there's probably um, men out there that uh, if they cannot afford this, that are not moving forward with this. And in the long run, it's costing our medical system more in the end 
because three out of four uh, men that uh, um, end up with prostate cancer, um, it usually ends up being terminal. It's not a good situation for them. So the earlier you catch it, the more likely it's, I, I guess it's 100% um, curable if you catch it early enough. And PSA levels uh, indicate whether or not you're, um, you're having issues and, and whether it's turning into a cancerous state. So mm -hmm. I would like to uh, support this. Um, this is the town of Cochrane. And I'm just uh, looking here. So I guess what my motion would be here is that we support um, we support the town of uh, Cochrane's uh, initiation, and they're sending it to the Honorable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. And I would say the same um, in the letter, it indicates who they're distributing their motion to. And I would like to send it to the same individuals. And please include our uh, provincial and our federal MP and MPP our local MPP and NMP. Okay, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. I, I agree with you 100% on that one. It's uh, something that's gotta be addressed. Um, but I'll need a seconder on that one, please. Uh, Councillor Vanendal, all in favor of that? I'm okay. in favor. Yep. yep. Uh, second one, City of Vaughan, raising the legal age for a licensed driver from 16 to 18. Right. I can understand why maybe someone that's in, and, and I've read the reasoning behind this. I totally get it, but it's a very emotional um, motion in my, in my view. I, I totally get it. If it were my kids that had been, um, uh, had been died from an accident where a 16 year old brand new driver was involved, I may react the same way, but looking at this logically for uh, a province of almost 14 million people, uh, it doesn't make any sense there, particularly for us who live in rural areas. And a lot of times uh, our kids' jobs depend on being able to have the ability to drive uh, in order to get to where they're going. Uh, we've got kids who live in Harrow right now who sometimes have to get to school in Kingsville for their high school education. And, uh, you know, at 16 years old, I know I was driving to school sometimes uh, because I, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, I was working after school and wanted to stay in town to be able to uh, go right to work. Um, so I'm totally against this. And I think that we need to voice our opinion here to make sure that this does not go through. So um, again, uh, the city of Vaughan uh, is deeply saddened and uh, they are requesting, just looking to see who they put this to. Requesting a move to the age of 18, Deputy Mayor. Correct. Uh, so they said uh, they sent a copy of this resolution to the premier, the minister of transportation and the minister of municipal affairs and housing and to all municipalities in Ontario. Um, I, rather than to all municipalities in Ontario, uh, can we swap that for AMO and include our local MPP, uh, Taraz Natashak? Okay, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, that's your motion. Opposed as opposed yeah. to the city of Vaughan. Uh, a seconder for that. Uh, uh, Councillor Bjorkman, you're the seconder. Okay, all in, all in favor of that one? That one's carried. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor, for bringing that forward. Any, that, any, that's it. Anything else? Okay, thank you, uh, Council. Go ahead. Uh, item 14, that the uh, meeting minutes from the June 21st, Essex Accessibility Advisory Committee uh, be received, approved, and adopted as circulated. Mover on this one, please. Need a mover. Uh, Councillor Bjorkman and Councillor Bowman. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. 15.1 is the May 2021 Bank Payments Report. That said report be for the month of May be ratified as submitted. Mover on the uh, bank report, please. Uh, Councillor Bowman and Councillor Van Andolen. All in favor? Carried. Uh, 
under notices of motion item 17 on the agenda at 17.1.1 uh, the following notice of motion was first presented at the july 5th meeting and is now being brought forward this evening consideration uh, as moved by councillor bondi that essex town council requests that eok energy's board meeting minutes be open to council and or the asset management plan be shared with council and that further town council request Ron McDermott, the chair of the ELK Energy Board, uh, requests or raise this request at their next scheduled meeting. <clears throat> and as, as moved yeah. by Councillor Bonnie, would require a seconder. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have a seconder on this, please? Uh, no seconder. No seconder. I'll confirm again, no seconder, no seconder. On this evening's agenda, any reports and announcements from the council members? Okay, we'll go right to Councillor Guerin. Any uh, announcements? Not this week, thanks. Councillor Bondi, anything at all? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just, I've had a lot of people uh, ask me about um, group training, group diversity training, uh, because of everything that's going on. Uh, I don't know if Councillor Vanderdolen uh, took his training, but um, that's another question is, um, are, are we going to look into that or can we look into that as a council? Do you have any plans for that, Mr. Mayor? Uh, no, not at this point. No, I don't. Uh, it was brought up at council, but we didn't, uh, we didn't go any further with it. So. Okay. I just, it just might be something that, um, it's not too late to try to bring this council together, right. And to try to do the right thing. And if we could do a few things that, uh, upgrading training, you can never go wrong. So, um, I don't know, maybe I'll look at a notice of motion or something in the future again. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Councillor Bowman. Do you have anything tonight? Just a comment uh, with the sort of the relaxing of the restrictions as of last weekend. Uh, it just seems to be people seem to have a uh, weight lifted off their backs, and uh, um, and uh, I notice people are still social distancing and uh, in, in places using masks where they should be. And that's a good, good feeling. And it, we noticed tonight on the agenda was the festival in Amherst or in uh, McGregor that we uh, uh, approved the uh, significant event. And uh, that's a positive thing in our area. And uh, uh, hopefully over the next uh, month or two, um, the, uh, things develop properly and uh, we can keep moving forward and uh, hopefully there's no more hiccups. Thank you. Bjorkman, did I get you yet? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, oh, so piggybacking on Councillor Bowman's there, um, you know, reporting from uh, Colchester Beach and Colchester Schoolhouse, uh, it's a great weekend. Uh, the market that was held at the Colchester Schoolhouse, they had a great turnout. Um, it was a really great way to show off the, the building and the property. Um, got a lot of, of traction there. And just the, uh, the families, everybody was seeing down at the park and down at the beach, the, the way people are, are conducting themselves. Uh, I think it was well worth us investing in, our, in the security and in our, our parking enforcement. Uh, there's just been no issues really to report from down there. And I, I get to look at it a lot. And uh, I must say, I'm, I'm really pleased with, with how uh, it's been. And, and uh, you know, I think our residents are, are getting to benefit from that. So anyways, but it was a great showing there for the, uh, the schoolhouse committee. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Van Nolan, did you have anything? Yeah, just a brief thing. Uh... I want to thank the half dozen people who responded to my uh, comments a few weeks ago with the gypsy moths, uh, some, some local landowners or uh, even just uh, small woodlot owners who uh, 
saw their trees decimated and we're going to see if uh, we can get something organized for them next year. So I just, uh, if I haven't gotten back to you yet, I will. And uh, just thank them for, uh, for answering my call. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Malash, did you have anything? Nope, I'm good, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just have one thing I'm gonna echo uh, Councillor Bjorkman. Um, I spent the, uh, the whole morning down there on Sunday with my grandson. <laughs> and I'll tell you, those grandchildren can sure wear you out. <laughs> but uh, I, I gotta just say, uh, the, uh, the pirate ship down there, they did a terrific job. And I'll tell you the splash pad, and, and you're right, the people seem to, um, they're really enjoying our park down there. And we have a lot of people coming from the city. And uh, like you said, with the security, people are really, really obeying the rules down there. Uh, I didn't see one problem down there whatsoever. Even on the beach, uh, there, it, it was nice to see that everybody is getting along and there's not a whole lot of trash. I see people picking up trash and throwing it in the, uh, in the uh, cans, which is, uh, it's good. I mean, uh, we have something we, we got to be proud of down there. So, but hats off to our staff too. They're doing a great job down there controlling everything. So thank you. Moving to item 19 bylaws, uh, bylaw 2042 for three, for third reading. This is the confirming bylaw from the July 15th. Move around that one on that bylaw, please. Uh, Councillor Bowman and uh, Councillor Bjorkman, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, bylaw 2011 being a bylaw to prohibit and regulate the sale of fireworks and the setting off of fireworks in the town of Essex. Uh, this is also before Council for third reading uh, this evening. And if I may, uh, Council, or if I may, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Council, just provide a couple comments. Um, this uh, bylaw received two readings at the July 5th meeting, and it was uh, consideration of third reading was was deferred um, to allow for uh, patient and secondly, um, to to um, consider a, a few minor revisions to address some of the feedback that council themselves provided at the July 5th meeting. Um, with respect, firstly, to the uh, feedback, I just wanted to point out to council uh, just some of the minor revisions. There was just a few uh, that were made uh, from the, as compared to the bylaw first proposed uh, back on July 5th. Uh, the first item related to the setting off of fireworks. Um, we used a model in the proposed bylaw of three days before, three days after. And some of the feedback received from council was that when you consider the close proximity of Canada Day and Independence Day, it provided for quite an expanded period fireworks could be set off. So we did revise that. Um, it now reads uh, that it, uh, the setting off of fireworks would be three days before and including July 1st and three days after July 1st, inclusive of July 4th. So that in effect narrows down the number of days in which the fireworks could be set off during that period of time. Uh, secondly, uh, we clarified um, just to make it, you know, a little bit more evident in the bylaw um, that when it comes to um, family fireworks only. Um, if someone wishes to, you know, celebrate a special event on a day other than those designated, um, they would need uh, they would need approval from the fire chief in writing. So the fire chief would have that discretion uh, subject bylaw. Uh, the the resident wouldn't be required to have to go through the same formal application process. As, as would be applicable for a permit for, for your more your larger you know display or pyrotechnic uh, fireworks shows, um, but they would need to contact the, the fire chief and have that, uh, that approval in, in writing. Uh, thirdly, um, the bylaw that council first looked at back at July 5th um, did provide that family fireworks would only be per, uh, permitted to be set off on private property. Um, but we added some more clarification and just and, and provided for the fact that the family fireworks on any public or municipal property, again, is, is prohibited unless the fire chief has provided an approval in writing. Um, and then just a couple last uh, revisions here. 
Um, the previous bylaw provided for, as proposed, provided for a permit fee. The current bylaw now provides for the possibility of a permit fee. So the wording has been um, changed so that a complete application, and again, just to clarify, the permit fee is only applicable to um, pyrotechnic shows, display shows, not to family fireworks. Um, but uh, so now the word, the application that would have to go with that permit, um, if applicable, the permit fee would have to be submitted with that application. So if it's not council's desire this evening to impose a, a permit fee, that's something that administration uh, could come back to council with uh, for authority. Uh, so the wording in the bylaw has been tweaked to allow for that possibility without expressly mandating at this time that there's a permit fee. Um, and, and certainly uh, a, a couple of points um, on, on the permit fees, um, and, and perhaps it wasn't as clearly expressed at, at the July 5th meeting, is that the permit application for a pyrotechnic show or, or for a display fireworks um, really is a, there is a little bit more involved than, than simply a signing and stamping of the. Um, there's insurance to review, there's an indemnity agreement uh, to review and, and get signed. Um, there's site plan maps to look at depending on you know the show. Um, there could be a site visit through fire. And then the other item that's currently in this bylaw is that the fire chief would have the discretion uh, if he or she decided was appropriate and needed to require one of their own staff to be present for that show. And so certainly that would be an expenditure of resources. And, and so the, the notion of a permit fee was presented to council as part of the cost recovery uh, for such things. And then lastly, um, there was concerns expressed about uh, notice. Um, so we, we in 7.7, .7, we clarified that the fire chief has uh, the ability to impose additional conditions on those permit. Um, but to clarify further, we said part of those conditions may include uh, the requirement that the applicant provide the appropriate notice of the upcoming event. And that could be notice to the OPP, um, that could be notice to surrounding uh, neighbors, but that would be uh, part of, of um, you know, what could be imposed as conditions by the fire chief. And then finally, with respect to additional consultation, um, this revised bylaw was circulated uh, to the OPP, uh, to the fire department again, to bylaw enforcement, and, and even to a, a local display and pyrotechnic company. Um, and uh, so that was, that was circulated back around July 9th. Um, we, we did not receive any further feedback and or concerns from that revised bylaw, uh, but certainly the opportunity for additional consultation was provided. Did the report, uh, any questions? Uh, Councillor uh, Bondi had a question, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you to our clerk, I'm in council and I am glad we took a little bit longer on this and, uh, and did a, added a little bit more to it. Is there any way we're going to notify the police when we get these applications? So say ABC Grill in McGregor wants to have this big firework display. Can we let the police know as well? Is that something on there? And also once we have this put together, can we have Alex put this out on our social media? somehow so that people are aware that we have a new fireworks bylaw because I don't know, just a couple days ago, fireworks are going off and, and then I get complaints. I just want everybody to know what our new bylaw is, please. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Mayor and to Councillor Bondi and the rest of council. Uh, yes, the fire chief would have, um, would have that ability to impose a, a requirement that the OPP be notified and, and bylaw enforcement for that. Um, as part of, you know, regulating should there be, should there be complaints uh, in regards to the setting off of those, of those fireworks. And um, certainly I, you know, I, I see the utility in providing as, as much, uh, you know, social media um, and further education for the public, because it, it really is a, a new bylaw. And, and so certainly um, it makes sense to, to ensure that we get that word out. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Guerin, go ahead. Thank you for you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, our clerk. Um, so on the family fireworks, um, Mr. Oja, you mentioned that there's no permit needed for them, but then I do see um, 
um, in here, if they want to let them off on public property, it's not permitted unless they have written permission by the chief. Did you also say in there that that would also be accompanied by a paid application? Not in that instance. Uh, sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to Councillor Garen. Um, not in that instance. They still, the resident, um, you know, want, assuming family fireworks again, the resident fireworks on municipal property um, would not be required to go through that formal permitting process um, that the, you know, the commercial operators would require. Um, but certainly they would need to contact the fire chief and, and have some sort of proof that that approval was provided from, from the fire chief. And I've spoken to the fire chief and we have, um, you know, an internal document that, that could be signed and, and provided for that purpose. Okay, so, so no fee for the family fireworks and it is prohibited on public property or town property, but they could get approval in writing through the chief. Thank you. Correct, that's correct. Um, Councillor Bowman, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I like the provision that uh, there could be a uh, fee levied. And at this point, it's, it's not in there to be. Um, if you stop and think the you know, whole idea of the fireworks is, you know, for the individual families or neighbors or, or uh, enjoyment of, of people in the area. And the other side of it, uh, the big pyrotechnic shows, again, are usually a community. Funfest is an example and, and many other similar type things that are um, basically for the community at large is at to put them off because it's not something you can charge an admission to see fireworks. So uh, uh, I, I like the idea that at this point, we're not charging the fees. And uh, uh, if it becomes a problem, we can add it in a future future time. But uh, I, I think uh, it's something that the public really enjoys, the fireworks, and especially the, the big shows that are, you know, that require the pyrotechnics. So anyway, those are my thoughts. And uh, uh, I think a great work on the bylaw. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councillor Van Nolan, you were next. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, uh, well, I'm glad some of these uh, misunderstandings have been have been cleaned up. But I, I'm still going to vote against this, or at least I'm not going to vote for it because I think it's I think it's a bureaucratic overreach. That's uh, most of it's unnecessary, or at least big chunks of it. You know, uh, saying that well, we won't impose a fee this time, but there probably will be one later. Well, okay, that means there's going to be a fee. Uh, we know where the we know the whole camel will be in this in the tent eventually. And as, as Councillor Bowman is pointing out, what this is just taxing an activity that's almost entirely for kids. So you know, I, I'm opposed to that. Um, and, uh, and by the way, we were, we were misled last meeting. We were told that Ottawa has banned uh, firecrackers. So that's not true. I, at, least, at least I couldn't find any, any record of that anywhere. I found out that the municipality of Ottawa has banned certain firecrackers by brand name. But the municipality is not the federal government banning fire, firecrackers. And, um, and I think that there should be more distinction made between uh, rural properties and, and crowded urban or, or even large lots and, and crowded urban uh, situations that, um, you know, we, we, this, is, this is too much of a, too heavy handed. And finally, this, this provision that a, a, a paid firefighter has should be standing by. So that means that the people enjoying that fireworks display, display are now playing, paying three times. For, for fire protection. They're paying a fee for the licensed people to, to set off the fireworks because they're completely trained in this. So the, whoever buys that show is paying for that. They're paying for our, what is it, 55 ball, uh, firefighters to be staffing on rotation to three stations. So that costs us money, you know, millions a year ongoing. And then we'd be paying again for a firefighter to be standing there. Uh, I think that's a make work project uh, to create more billable hours. And I'm, I'm opposed to that, so I won't be supporting this. Thank you. Nobody else from council? Okay. Um, uh, the chief, did you, wanna, did you wanna make anything, a statement on this at all, or we covered it? 
through you, Your Worship. No, uh, uh, Mr. Oche's done a, a great job, and and he's done the the. Uh, I'll be honest, he's done the the brunt of the work on this. He's uh, been uh, really uh, a, a staple uh, background for this. But yeah, the ex and to Councillor Vanderdoel, and it is in the ex uh, explosives act that fireworks. Firecrackers are prohibited. I can dig that up and send you the information because I didn't make it up. I, I read it right out of the explosive act. So I can, I'll can i look that up tomorrow and I'll send that out to you. Okay, uh, on the report, all in favor of this bylaw, I mean? The, hmm? Yeah, the third reading. All in support? The third reading. Okay, uh, oh, pardon me, I need a mover first and a second. Mover, uh, Councillor uh, Bowman and Councillor Guerin. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? One, uh, where's the Deputy Mayor? He's gone, okay. Thank you, uh, Council. Nineteen point three bylaws for first and second reading. We have uh, bylaw twenty forty six being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of this July nineteenth, twenty twenty one regular meeting of council. On this, uh, Councillor Bowman and Councillor Bjorkman, all in favor? That's carried, and I guess that's it for the evening. And uh, I'll need a motion. Motion to adjourn, uh, Councillor Bjorkman and Councillor Bondi, all in favor? That's carried, have a great evening.